there. My name is Reno. Welcome to this lesson in trigonometry. In previous lessons, we have worked out heights and distances using trig ratios. Do you remember the real life examples we used? join Wesley and Haley who have come across a different kind of problem to solve. They are learning how to use their scientific calculators to help them solve trig equations. Why don't you get your scientific calculator out and follow along? By the end of this lesson you will be able to use the second function or shift key on your calculator. Know the difference between finding a ratio and finding an angle. Know the difference in method needed to solve trig equations such as 2 cos theta is equal to 0 comma 5 and cos 2 theta is equal to 0 comma 5. Let's go and see what Wesley and Haley have been getting up to. Hey, Haley. What's up? Uh, nothing much. My teacher just gave me this problem to solve for homework, but I don't seem to know how to do it. The problem says solve for alpha. Let me see. This looks like a normal right angle triangle. Can't we use the trig we've learned so far? Cool, but um, how are we going to do that? Do you know how to solve this problem? Let's have a closer look. Can you see that line AB is opposite angle alpha and line CB is adjacent to angle alpha and we have the 90 degree angle opposite to line CA. Now what do we call that line CA? That's right, it's called the hypotenuse. Is there any other information that we have been given? Yes, that's right. The adjacent side is equal to 1 and the hypotenuse is equal to 2. Do you think that Wesley and Haley got that? Cool, check that. So now we know the lengths of the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So now we can use normal trig ratios. Yeah, soccer tour. What's the soccer tour got to do with it? Soccer tour? Don't you get it? Fantastic! They are right on target. We know what the ratios are. So, ka, toa. Can you see that cos alpha is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse? And if we fill in the values we know, we get cos alpha is equal to a half. OK, so now we've got the equation cos alpha is equal to a half. So now we, now we can use the calculator to solve for alpha. That's it, but I'm not quite sure how. Up until now, we've only used equations like this. 10, 17 degrees is equal to AB divided by 142 or cos 50 degrees is equal to 4,3 divided by AB. I see what you're saying. We've always known the size of the angle and we were asked to find the length of a side. But now the unknown is the angle and we have the length of the side. Let's try it anyway. If I press 1, divided by 2 and then cos, I get that alpha is equal to 0.99996. That can't be right. How can an angle be so small? Alpha equal to 0, 0,99996 would round off to alpha equal to 1. Maybe there's something else we have to press on the calculator. I think it's the second function button. When you are solving for an angle, you need to use a new key on your calculator. Do you see that above the sign 
cars and tan buttons, we have sine to the power minus 1, cos to the power minus 1, and tan to the power minus 1. We use these keys when we want to find an angle. I'm sure you are asking, how do we get to use the keys on top of the actual keys? Well, we have to press a special button. Look at the top left of your calculator. If you have a DAL calculator, you will see a second function key. If you have a FX calculator, you will see a shift key. These keys perform the same function. Just like people, different calculators think in different ways. So even though they have different names, they do the same operation. Now that we know which buttons to press, we are ready to solve for alpha. I'm going to work it out using both types of calculators. Starting with the DAL calculator, you will press the second function button. Remember, this tells the calculator that you are going to work out an angle. And then you press the trigonometrical function, in our case, cos. Open brackets, 1 divided by 2, close brackets, equals, so that the calculator will now give us the answer. I'm sure you got 60 degrees. Now, let's try it on an FX calculator. Remember, this is the type of calculator that has a shift key. We need to press 1 divided by 2 equals. Now, you need to tell the calculator you want to work out an angle. So, we press the shift key and then the trig ratio cos. Now we press equals to tell the calculator to find the answer. Did you also get 60 degrees? Well done! This means that when cos alpha is equal to a half, alpha is equal to 60 degrees. I think we have it. Alpha is 60 degrees. An angle that size makes a lot more sense than one of one degree. So, if we replace alpha with 60, we should get that cos alpha is equal to a half. Let's check to be sure. Great thinking. Let's do it too. I want to find out cos 60. Isn't maths awesome? You can use the answer to prove the question. Let us try some more. Theta is equal to 55,4 degrees. You are doing brilliantly. Are you ready for a challenge? Of course you are. We need to get cos alpha on its own. So we will divide both sides by 2. So we get cos alpha is equal to a half divided by 2 over 1. And as we did previously, a half multiplied by 1 over 2, which becomes 1 divided by 4, which is a quarter. So cos alpha is equal to a quarter. I'm sure you realize that a quarter is the same as 0, 0,25. So we can say that cos alpha is equal to 0, 0,25. Now, we have an equation that we can work out on the calculator. 
Now, what about that second equation? In this question, the angle is 2 multiplied by alpha. So cos of 2 alpha is equal to a half. We have to calculate the whole of 2 alpha first. Let's work it out using both calculators. <laughs> Now we can solve for alpha. We know that 2 alpha is equal to 60 degrees. Then we will divide both sides by 2 and calculate that alpha is equal to 30 degrees. Let's compare the methods of how to solve for alpha in these two equations. In the first equation, we divided by 2 first, so that we could get the cos alpha alone. We then used the cos to the power of minus 1 key to solve for alpha. In the second equation, we first used the cos to the power of minus 1 key, as the 2 was in front of the angle. We then divided by 2 as we wanted to solve for alpha and not 2 alpha. Fantastic. You are all getting so good at trig. Let's go over what we have learned today. In this lesson, we looked at solving trig equations using a calculator. We used the second function or shift key to find the angle. Have you achieved the outcomes for this lesson? Let us look at them now. The task will help you assess whether you have achieved these outcomes. In the next lesson, we will use the sine to the minus 1, cos to the minus 1, and tan to the minus 1 keys on the calculators to solve real-life trick problems. Until then, keep calculating! <laughs> Bye. <laughs>